Hey everybody, I think I'm live. Welcome to What Is This? This is a show that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm so excited. It's the first time I'm learning all sorts of new software, so please bear with me. This could be a complete train wreck, but the show, What Is This? And what is it? It's a show about solving the mysteries of stuff. Every day, as a matter of fact, five minutes ago, every day I get texts from antique dealers and collectors from all over the world asking me, Josh, can you help me with this? I can't figure out what this is. A lot of times it's just about ballpark price because they're looking at something at a yard sale. But a lot of times it's a mystery or a piece they've had in their collection for a long time and they can't figure it out. You know who you are and you know I, you know I love doing it. So uh, I really love that you guys send me this stuff. Uh, there's a few of you out there that I'm sure are going to text me tonight or tomorrow and go, hey, Josh, you still haven't figured out blank. And it's true. There's a couple of pieces I've been working on. I've been working on a Stein for someone for years. Um, <laughs> it feels like years. I got a, uh, a painting of um, a really good friend of mine. Joe that I've been working on for a long time, trying to figure out a signature, everything. Time I think I have it figured out, I don't. Anyway, so why am I doing this? I love sharing and I love the education of all of it. I learned from you guys from sending me the stuff just as much as I feel like I'm sharing my knowledge with you guys. But I want, I've had so many people ask me, they're like, Josh, how do you do this? And I don't think I'm doing anything special, but apparently I'm pretty good at figuring out some of these things that people have worked on for years. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do on the fly and live. And I'm learning a lot of new technology today. So sharing screens and stuff might be a little challenging, uh, but bear with me. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. I have uh, four or five items today that I think you're going to be, you're going to see why I love what I do. Okay. There is some uh, stuff I've already solved that people sent this week. And there's some stuff I haven't figured out. And I'm hoping maybe you guys have the answers. And there's some mysteries in here as well. So there's one I've been working on for, mm, gosh, I want to say nine months. And I have to put it away every once in a while because it'll make you crazy if you don't. So anyway, I'm just going to jump right in. I think that's the best thing. Again, thank you all for tuning in tonight. I hope this is a regular thing. I want to do it every Thursday night. As long as you guys are watching and I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll just get back to doing my crazy uh, auction shows. I know you guys. And thank you so much for all the support you've done with uh with um, last week of the auction, it's doing fantastic. I'm coming back March 4th with uh, season four. And uh, it's, I try to get better and better with every season. Again, also, please email me. I got a, let's see, I got crazy graphics here. You know, uh, let's see, check out my blog, follow me at, here we go. Um, this is the show, it is, what is this? Solving your mystery finds. Send me your mysteries. Again, anytime during this broadcast or anytime during the week or anything, do me a favor and just send me um, just send me whatever you have. And if I can get to it, I will. I have a feeling I'm going to get a little barraged, but um, I'll do my best. And I may just email you back and say, hey, it's, a, it's an X, Y, or Z. So that'll be pretty cool too. Um, and also and subscribe to my channel right now. That would be fantastic right at the bottom of the video video or when it's over, just go to, you know, at Josh Speaks and uh, do that. Sign up at my uh, my website, check out my blog, and I would be thrilled to death to have you guys. Um, again, this is my passion. And if I can help you or you want any tips and tricks, I'll also be sending out a lot of the tools I use. So uh, you guys have an idea of that uh, because there's I try to do most things with using free sites. I really do. I do use WorthPoint and I can send you a link for that to save some money on that and some other things. But I really have it kind of the Google. That's that's my go to. So anyway, let me um, let me show you a couple things here. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to give you a little teaser first. And it's the piece that was on the front cover. I actually have it here. Um, this is the piece right here. Check this out. I don't know if you can see. Oh, man, I love how this thing focuses in. All right, you see this? Here's the back. Okay. See that? All right. On the other side, it has this thing. And on the back of that, it was kind of like a weird mirror thing. And... All right, let's put this on. It is not a belt buckle. Somebody already guessed that. 
All right, this is, check that out. You see it there? All right. We're gonna get into this piece a little later. I got a lot of screen uh, screenshots for you and things. Um, I do believe it has magic power. So right now I feel like a million bucks, but I'm gonna take it off because I gotta calm down. So we're gonna get into the first item of the day, it's not that. I'm I'm saving that as a teaser for you. And I'm gonna do my first screen share with you in about two seconds. This comes to us from our buddy, Mike. Let's check this out. Hey, Mike sends me this and goes, what is this? And actually what Mike said was, hey, Josh, you know, he didn't say, hey, Josh. He said, well, I hope you had a nice birthday. Thanks, Mike. This is Mike from Michigan. As a matter of fact, Mike is from... Uh, uh, Harbor Beach now. He's from Arizona. That's where I know him from, but he's from Arizona, but he's now got the corner store in Harbor Beach, Michigan. Awesome antique and collectible pop culture bookstore. You name it. Go check it out if you're up there. Awesome. I'm giving him a plug because I've seen all the work he's done putting the store together and it, it's just awesome. So he says, I hope you had a nice birthday. Thank you. My birthday was Groundhog's Day. So it happened over and over and over again. And uh, he said, I assume your new show will be viewable after the fact too. I'm not much of a late bird. So uh, this item is approximately 11 by 15. It's wood and mounted on cloth. So I can't see the back. I completely flipped out when I got it, but I was disappointed and frustrated that I couldn't figure out what the darn thing is. That's why I do this show. Okay, I love trying to figure out what darn things are. So uh, it's extremely detailed and it's obviously an artist and his apprentice. And I know what I'll send next. Oh, all right, yeah, Mike send everything. So that's really super cool. So let me show you the detailed shots that Mike gave me. So Mike sent me this. He sent me this image right here. I, you can see my mouse floating there. All right, he sent me this image and you see this gentleman looking at a, um, looking at a uh, easel and there's uh, what I believe Mike thought this was the apprentice standing behind him and this gentleman or artist viewing the art on the easel there. As a matter of fact, let me blow this up a little bigger. And he sent me these close up shots to show the detail. And, and what that showed me is, and immediately I thought it's a printer block. Now when Mike saw it was wood, that probably threw him because most uh, printer blocks that we think of today are either copper plate engravings or they're, you know, on metal. But in, in the olden days, I believe starting in about the 15th century, they had, um, they were on, they were on, um, well, there were copper plate engravings for a long time, but they were wood and they would actually carve these, you know, they, the reverse of the image would be carved in the wood. So the print could be made and printing has been around, like I said, about 15th, 16th century. And the wood, something a level of this detail would most likely be late 18th, early 19th century. So that had me wondering, okay, what, you know, what is this? And first of all, let me, let me throw in there, having been around antiques and collectibles for a very long time, since I've been, I can remember being three, four years old, I, I recognize the piece. Now, when I say that, I don't have a photographic memory the way I wish I did. I had a good friend, Joe Pander, that literally had a photographic memory and that I, I was so jealous of that. Uh, our, our friend Nicholas used to have one too. But anyway, I was like, I've seen this image before. But what I had to go on is what Mike, Mike gave me and he said, you know, what he thought. So I went with that. So when I did an original Google search, which I, I, I knew it was a printer block of some kind or a printer. So I just looked up like, you know, printer block, um, artist and easel, uh, 18th century. And I just did what I would call an image search, looking for something. Could I be so lucky? You know, so I'm like looking and I'm like, oh, okay, that's not helping me. So I was like, um, what, so I start to try to die, look back at what it is. So then I'm like, I know it's a print that actually exists. So how about a print uh, of an artist? Literally, I always try to be as, say exactly what I see, okay? I see a print of an artist and apprentice 
you know, with an easel looking, you know, looking at an easel, 18th century. And I'm like, okay, we're getting, we're getting a little closer here. All right. This, oh, what's this guy? Mm, okay. This is really, and, and one thing I want to point out, I was afraid when I do some of these searches because I, I've already found it. I was afraid. I was hoping when I was live, it didn't pop up immediately because it didn't pop up immediately. But now that it's in my cookies and in my cache or my computer, it'll remember things that you search. Uh, so your computer may not see the same exact images I see, but you're going to see the process. So I was like, okay, this isn't working. So I looked at, I looked at the piece again and I was like, to me, the guy looks Dutch or Flemish and it looks like it, maybe it's 19th century. And then I started really thinking, and I, again, this is the mystery part. You start looking at it and you go, wait a second, is this an apprentice? Or is this is this the apprentice and this the artist? Or is this the artist and maybe the man who's buying the painting? Uh, and he's looking at his work or or someone or someone studying the piece. You're like, you start really digging into it. And I again notice I'm not looking for this, I'm not looking for the wood engraving or the cut, wood cut, or the printer's block. I'm looking for the print because I know this made replicas. Then I went, wait a second, prints like this were always prints of known oil paintings. Now this is an oil painting somewhere that probably was turned into a print. So then I said, I think I can figure this out. Why don't I approach it that way and go, okay, I think it's Dutch. So I went Dutch painting um, and I was like, artist, easel. And I started just doing all these keywords and I'm like, okay, no, I don't have 19th century. Let's see, 19th century. And I was going, I was, now I had a bunch of images to work with. So I start scrolling through, scrolling through, and I just about gave up and I know it pops up. And if it doesn't, I have my, if, I have my exact keywords I used because again, this wasn't a two second process. This probably took me an hour. So a matter of fact, and I literally didn't look at what I did because I didn't want to know it again. And yeah, here's what I used. Dutch oil painting in the studio, in the studio, Dutch oil painting in the studio artist with the easel. That's what exactly what I Google searched. So when I did that, I lo and behold, pop up here. Where are you? I know you're on this screen. And if you're not, I saved it because again, once you do Google searches, a bunch of searches, it can actually, your cookies and your cash can change. So hold on one second. I prepared for, see, this is the kind of thing I was worried about. And that's why I triple everything. So it's going to pop up on your right hand side. So, and I found it, see that image. And again, I'll show you, it was definitely in my search engine. Oh, where are you? Oh, last time I looked at it, it was at the bottom right hand side, but that's okay. Cause if it doesn't pop up there, you guys are probably screaming at the thing going, it's right there. It's right there. Anyway, I'll show you right where it is. It's right here. This is what it was. So now I knew it was a print of this painting. So if you see here, it is in the catalog resume of this artist. It's Charlemont and I'm in Charlemont. And then I'm like, that's why I know I've seen it before because there's a famous oil painting of this. And guess what? We're completely, not completely on a wild goose chase, but you're going to notice that it's the brothers on, on, I'm going to say Andre, by the way, I butcher foreign languages, so get used to it. It's Wilhelm and Andrean uh, van der Velde, 1856. And it's an engraving after Monsign Messinier, and I know I'm killing that, painting by Victor Desclaw. <laughs> all right. So you see what it is. All right. And this is the etching. Now, what I found very curious about this was the etching dimensions. 
which is the print, the etching that was taken from a one from a block is the exact same dimensions as what Michael has. Now that to me is very exciting. And the reason I say it's very exciting is because I truly believe that this printer block is the printer block that these were made from. However, I don't know how many of them were made. I don't know. As a matter of fact, let me bring this up. Oh, I just lost my sheet. What's this live? All right. It's, I don't know how many were made of the printer block. Now, there is a book that I believe these were in. A matter of fact, I'll bring you all my solutions up here. All right, here's a better picture of the image or or my computer decided my memory shot and it will not it will not open the image. Oh, that's good. Anyway, you know what the image looks like and this is what we have. We have a woodcut printer plate that would have produced the antique print the brothers Vanderveld and the painters right here, you see who they are. I'm not gonna butcher these names anymore. But the dimensions of this piece, and I'll show you, a matter of fact, I found several of these prints actually for sale out there in the world. And again, they are the print themselves, not what, what Michael has, Here, here's one. Now, again, note the dimensions right here of the actual print area, it's 13 by nine and Mike's is about 11 by 15 or so, and I don't know where he's taking the dimension from, but again, it would have been made to produce this print in a book. So what that tells me is he has an original printer block that for this print. Now that means it was hand cut. It was cut by someone to do this print, and I believe it's 19th century. So Michael has enough information to probably have it sent to an auction house. Um, I know he likes to use, I, I don't know if he'll shoot me, but he likes to use Freeman's in Philadelphia and they would be perfect for something like this. He'll send this to them. He's got the information. He knows what it's a printer block for. Now, in my experience with printer blocks, with the original blocks that made these, because they've been used so many times to print, they're actually not it's not like a photo negative where they can make more. A lot of times the reason the print, the printer block was taken out of circulation is because it's been used too many times. It won't press and print properly. However, to an antique collector, that's a really cool thing. Uh, to the art world, they've never been as super collectible as uh, an original etching or print themselves. But who knows? I'm really curious to see what he gets for it. Uh, I have found this print upwards of twelve and fifteen hundred dollars this version is three hundred dollars right now so i hope that helps again a lot of times i will solve mysteries for people and it may not be it may not be um life-changing money but it's nice to know what you have so you can make that decision so i hope that helps that's number one let's get on to number two all right, I want to bring up my next item for you. And I'm again, thank you for bearing with me. I'm going to get better at this. You really, it's hard to practice this because it's kind of a, you're, you're kind of practicing this live. So I might uh, set up a private room and have you guys uh, help me, or I'm going to get one of you to be my director and let you guys click all these buttons. So next, this is what we got next. Hold on one sec, let me get here. All right, what is this? All right, so you say, what is this? Many of you have probably seen this bronze or bust before. I have several times. I've seen them and when you see your question, it's funny because it's something I've always wondered myself but I never asked. So Jillian from New York writes me and says, I've seen several of these small Asian head busts of a woman at thrift stores, antique stores over the years. Do you know who it is or anything, you know, or if it's anything? I think they are pretty. Oh, she spelled they. I'm not going to critique your writing. They're pretty, but I've seen them all over the, all over the map price wise and want to know more. Thanks for doing the show. No, thank you for, for being interested. I really appreciate it. So you see this piece right here. All right. I've seen several of them. Funny thing is she sent me this about three days ago. So I went to the local antique store down the street and 
Doesn't that look familiar? So yeah, they come in all flavors, shapes and sizes. I've seen them. And this one was listed in the store as mid-century modern. Thank you, Antique Trove, for loaning that to me. I'll bring it back tomorrow. So anyway, it's a really cool piece. And I've seen tons of them. I Who is it? Who's the artist? So everyone, you know, who I've asked, you know, just out of curiosity before I did the research said, you know, it's, it's Quan Yin. Um, it's a deity. It's a goddess. It's a this, it's a that. They all know who it is, but, you know, I'm like, okay, we actually need to get to the bottom of this. So let me show you what I did with this. So let's see if I can get this thing to work the way I want it to. Okay, are you going to give me a hard time or are you going to do what I want you to do? All right, studio restream. All right, there we go. Okay, is my Google still there? Nope. Give me one second. I just got to pull a Google screen over here. Come on, baby. There you go. All right, so what I did was a Google image search. Now, if you've never done a Google image search, let me show you how to do it. All right, I already have that picture on my desktop. So if you have the picture on your desktop or on your phone, if you go to Google and you go to images, it's just this little camera icon right here. And you click the camera icon. It says paste the item URL or upload the image. I have the image on my desktop. So I just choose the image. Well, I had it on my desktop. I know it's in the, what is this folder? What is this? And I put it in and it's searching, searching, searching. I'm like, whoa, look at all these. Wait a second. Who's this? There's the artist. Okay. It's Stan Lee Nagoyan. Now I heard of him. And again, I've seen it as I've seen Thang Lee Nagoyan mid-century modern pieces. Now, apparently it's very, you'll see here when you look at all the other images, visual images, that there are a lot of them out there in the world and there's a lot of information about them. So I see a couple people reference this, but now I know an I have enough to go on. So now I can just look up the artist and say, okay, who's this artist? What can I find out about this person? Now this I found very interesting, a bunch of different information. And when I say that, the artist's life is kind of, you'll see here, most people, the artist is a Vietnamese artist, 1919 to 2006. Okay, so it means he was born in 1919 and passed 2006. He was Vietnamese, the head, and famous for this head of the young Vietnamese woman. I've also seen it called Loatian woman, um, a couple different titles, but they never reference who the woman is. They just said he did these bronzes of the young women. And mostly they were done originally, the original castings were done in the 1950s. So now they've been very popular. So they've been redone and recast from the 50s and 60s and 70s. And they are still making reproductions of this, of this bust. But the original period one was from the 50s, period will be signed. They'll be signed. A matter of fact, let me show you. Do, 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 do. If I can get the work pop, they'll be signed right back here. If it'll zoom in, come on, baby. Nope. It's because of the metal color. It doesn't want to pick it up. It won't even pick that up. Anyway, they're signed on the back. Like this one says made in Vietnam. It doesn't bear the artist's seal. What you're looking for is the actual chop seal on the back. And that will be the real true period ones. And they can bring several thousand dollars. Okay. Now, a really cool fact about them is a lot of GIs brought these home right after the Vietnam War. They were a very common gift. So there are a lot of them in the US. And the early, the if they're from the 50s and 60s, you know, if they were pre-war, they're quite valuable. And again, you when I say quite valuable, you might have two, three thousand dollars. Now, if you have one like this, the one I have here, you know, it's three, four hundred dollars. And it's funny, it's in the store for three hundred dollars. So that's what they are. But now you know it's Thang Lee Nagoyan, and it is the it's the bronze bust of a Vietnamese woman. 
So you know who it is, you know what it is, and you know what it's worth. And now you know the story. Really cool fact too is a lot of them have been purported to be made out of old military shells, so called trench art. Now, uh, this one in particular is just brass. I don't see any any um, markings or remnants that I would believe this to be made from uh, post-war material, but that's a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. So anyway, we're going to move on. I hope that one helps. And now we're going to get a little crazy. So, and when I say a little crazy, I'm going to take you on, I almost called this show Wormholes, and uh, I thought I'd have to explain too much what it is because it's really, what is this thing? What is this? So this is why I do this. So we're going to get into this piece, the piece I showed you right here. All right. So I've showed you this. I've showed you what I have here. Hold on one second. All right. I'm trying to get my, my screen going. There we go. I showed you this, you know, I have it right here. All right. Now I want to, the reason I blew it up just so you could actually see here. Let me see if I have close up. All right. Right here. This piece is actually sterling silver. All right. This is sterling silver. This is actually lapis. This is now this has all been tested. I did this separate. This is lapis. These beads are actually gold. They test about 14 carat. These are crystals, all right? This piece in here, right here is a quartz. This is a fire opal. This is an opal. I'm gonna flip, let's go. I wanna show you the back side. This is the back, okay? <laughs> this is the back. So you have some, you have some quartz crystal here. You have some crystals too that are wrapped in copper. And on the back side of this, you have this mirror. So you go, you know what? Maybe this is just a piece of junk. Now, I refuse to accept that because again, the odd thing about this is that this is sterling silver, gold, and these are gemstones. It's, it's, and it was handmade. It's hand, there's nothing on this not handmade. It does not have a single mark. There's no hallmark. There's no, there's nothing to tell me anything about this piece. So I kept looking at it and I, I was intrigued by it enough to buy it at an estate auction a few, just a few months ago. And it was really, it was sold for about the price of silver. And I just, I just thought it was a cool piece. So I thought it was a belt buckle. No, it's not a belt buckle. This does not attach to anything. As a matter of fact, it should have another hanger on the side. I sent it to friends of mine. I was told it's a spice box. It's not a box because it doesn't open. It's not that thick, as you can see. It, it's not made to be open. I was told it was a spice box. Then I was told it was a belt buckle. And then someone someone chimed in and said it was a camera. Someone else just said that, which I thought was awesome. It's not a camera. Well, it's a camera for outer space or something. So I kept looking at the shape, the, this piece, I thought maybe this was the tell. And this was completely different material. This was, this was bronze with like a lapis paint, almost like a polychrome and the stone. And on the backside, like I had showed you, it has like a mirror. All right. I almost got ahead of myself there. It had this mirror. So then I'm like, okay, maybe it's just some new agey thing. You know, it's, it's just some crazy thing now. So then I start looking at the estate. I go, okay, where did it come from? So I talked to the auctioneer and it had come from an estate of a woman whose mother, where she got it from, was a docent at the um, AS, at the um, museum in Arizona, um, the Phoenix Art Museum. And when I got her name and did some research, I found out she was, you know, she worked at the art museum for years, was really in the art. So I'm like, maybe it's an art jewelry piece. So I went down that wormhole and I'm looking everywhere, couldn't find anything. So I Google searched. All right. So, and let me tell you, let me, let me do for you what I, what I did, man, it just does not want to keep a Google page over here for me. It must be me closing the page. So I was like, um, all right, we have, we got a copper ring. So we got copper, uh, gold, silver, opal, um, jewelry. And I was like, okay, what's this? 
and I'm looking at pictures and I'm like, I can't, I can't find it. Like nothing looks right. And I'm like new age. I'm, I, so I just kept going like this. And I mean, literally paging and paging and paging and paging through all of this and using all just what I saw, what was there, you know, buckles, belt buckles, et cetera, et cetera, till I stumbled upon this. Okay. And I went, wait a second. It's mercury is the symbol. Wait, wait a second. This looks familiar. I'm like, why is mercury pop up? Now the symbol for mercury is actually made out of gold, silver, and copper, the symbol. And I went, well, that's weird, but wait a second, this weird little, little shape that, that looks like something I've seen. So I'm like, that's really cool. Wait a second. Doesn't that look like the symbol for mercury? I'm like, that is really cool. So I started going, you know, trying to figure out what this symbol was. So here the wormhole begins. So I'm like, I have this symbol and now also see the way it would be worn if that was the case. All right. And, and it makes no sense. So I'm like, Maybe it back now, maybe I'm like, maybe it is a belt buckle, but that's a belt buckle that would stab you in the gut. I mean, it's, it's five inches long. So, I mean, tall. So that's, it's not a belt buckle. I'm like, what is it? So I go back to this piece. I go back to this piece. I find the symbol. It's an alchemist symbol. I'm like, alchemy? What is, how, what does this have to do with alchemy? And then um, one of my friends said to me, it could be a talisman. I'm like, talisman, that sounds cool. I'm like, but from what? He goes, well, you know, in the 50s and 60s when this thing was probably made, you know, there was a lot of occult things going on. And, you know, if people were from around here and if she was in the uh, Sedona or in, in this area and in the arts community back then, you know, we weren't far from Hotel California. I'm like, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? Well, you know, it could be a new agey Sedona kind of thing. You know, it's got copper and it's got, whenever you see crystals with copper wrapped around them, it could be healing energy. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. Okay. But again, I'm still thinking it's a piece of jewelry. So I go on and I read about this symbol and I start reading about, and I read about this John D character and I had never heard anything. You want to go down a wormhole? Read about John D tonight. Okay. You'll see that I spent three hours trying to figure out if John D made this. I mean, you start to get nutty and you go down these wormholes. John D was an alchemist for Queen Victoria, and I'm sorry, Queen Elizabeth I, I believe. Yes. And also Anton LaVey and Hotel California and Aleister Crowley all followed him and all used some of this symbolism. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're right. This is some alchemist symbol and it is you know, maybe it's like Hotel California and maybe it's this, this crazy, crazy uh, theory is correct. So I start emailing. Uh, have you ever tried to Google alchemists and people who are into the dark arts and try to email them and say, hey, can I send you a symbol? And you tell me and they're all looking at it. And, they, and you know, I get some emails back from, you know, like Alistair 666 telling me, yes, it's the symbol for Mercury. Um, no, I've never seen anything like it. Um, you know, again, all of this, this thing might be worth 200 bucks in scrap metal, but I want to know what it is. So if any of you, this is one of those for you. If any of you out there can help me and tell me what on earth this thing is, I would be indebted to you and I'll give you a massive shout out. And if you're an appraiser, I'll give you a plug. And I think I have like 12,000 subscribers. So there'd be a lot of people knowing how awesome you are. I also want to point out one other thing that's really crazy. With this lot taped to the back of one of these pieces was this. And when I first saw it, I just thought it was a broken, a broken little piece. And if it's funny, I never noticed all the time I had it that it had the same symbol as this. But notice it matches. Is this coming off some, like some weird, crazy conspiracy episode? I hope so. So here, see this? 
and the colors, how it matches. I believe this was the original, whatever this is. And this was made at a later date. To either be like the larger version of it or, or yeah, let's just go with that. Anyway, the thing about it that's really cool is I did some more research because I went back to uh, the roots of the story, which were uh, the owner, the original owner, and found out she happened to be very good friends with a famous Mexican artist. Um, oh my gosh, his name is going to escape me. This is embarrassing. Anyway, he painted watermelons and such. You'll know exactly who it is. Uh, Toma, Toma, oh, come on. Tamayo. Okay, so Tamayo, and he was an artist and contemporary in those days. You have to remember Dolly, uh, Calder, Picasso, everybody was dabbling with all sorts of different things. And I was like, maybe this artist made this for her. Is it possible? And I started looking into his art, looking for this symbol. And it, it, I'll show you what happened with that because that made me crazy. A lot makes me crazy, but that's the good stuff. So I was like, Tamayo, Tamayo. I didn't know I was going to go down this part. And his famous, he's famous for painting all sorts of things, but he does, he does, uh, <laughs> he does watermelons. I like how tomato soup came up. See, tomato, watermelon. And look at this thing. You see this symbol? I don't know. It doesn't look exactly like what I had, but maybe he made this for her as some other symbol. I did try to speak with a relative and I did find a woman that knew her actually uh, in the seventies and said she was in the new agey stuff and not a cult per se, but was in the like UFOs and UFOlogy and things like that. So I believe this thing was probably just made by aliens here and put here to confuse me. But I can tell you, it's just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Drives me crazy. And that's why I have this show. I can solve mysteries all day, but I don't solve all of them. So if you can help me with that one, I would love it. That's going to be on our ongoing series. Figure that one out. I think I'm going to just put like web, uh, website together just for the ones I can't figure out and then all the ones that, that I've actually solved. So let's get on to one. I just, I hope you like that one. That's my cliffhanger. All right, number four. This one was kind of fun. My buddy Larry just sent this one over. This guy I went to elementary school with actually saw on Facebook that I was doing this show and he goes, what the heck is this? Now, so I looked at this one immediately and the first thing I thought was, I was like, oh, I remember those old sardine cans that you had a key to. But when he sent me the size of it, I was like, okay, now that would be a giant sardine can, maybe the Costco size. But I saw this handle being cast iron and the size of it. And I was like, you know what? It's a wrench of some kind. But And and Larry knows his stuff. He's like, I just don't know what it's, what it's a tool for. So again, I went, what is it? Wrench, key, cast iron. Uh, let's, let's see if we can find one. So I tried the image search of it and I didn't get anything close. So what I did was I did what I had told you. Oh my goodness. This Google window tab is going to make me crazy. So I did, let's see, maybe it'll even pop up cast iron, not bird bank. I was looking that up for somebody, um, cast iron tool. Uh, that's me cast iron tool wrench. Um, and I was like, okay, cast iron tool wrench key. Let's go key. And I'm like, okay, I don't see it here. And I was like, dun, 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 dun. I was looking through all these and I was like, okay, no, nope, no, nope, doesn't look like any of those. Doesn't look like any of those. And I was, I was looking for everything to do with the handle because that handle I swore I had seen before and just recently. So I was like, maybe it's for a, like a valve or a stem. So I put valve and I kept looking and I'm like, oh, this handle looks a little closer. This looks a little closer. And I'm like, maybe like, and I was like, oh, look at this, this radiator valve. And I was like, maybe, wait a second, radiator valve. How about gas? 
And I kept just adding and building to it. And I, again, I kept seeing the handle I wanted to see. And I'm like, this, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. And I just kept doing it until I nailed it down. Oh, cast iron wrench tool gas valve. Where are you? Mm -mm -mm. Come on. Anyway, it is a gas valve wrench that fits the exact key, like the top. Matter of fact, I don't know why it didn't pop up when I just did that. I Again, that's how I figured out what it was. But it is a gas valve wrench, and it's from about 1930, and it, it would have... You know this style of valve? It's the, it's the style of valve that looks like a key, like this. And it's shaped perfectly for that to fit in. And it was because a gas valve, you wanted to make sure it was shut off. So you had to make sure it was really shut off. So I know that one was uneventful. But again, it's how we put in, in your search exactly what you see. Like exactly what you see. Most people attribute more things to it and they can't figure it out because they make uh, assumptions. Don't make, don't assume what it is. Put exactly what you see. Okay. Here's another cool one. I'm going to give you. I hope you like this one. Do, 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 do. This is, this just came in yesterday. So you're actually going to see my email and everything I got. Come on, work with me. All right. So another friend of mine, Chuck, sent this over. He says, hey, Josh, this bears the title Paradise. It's signed Whitefish, Montana. I got it at an auction. I can't find anything that identifies it or a mark. Uh, there were numerous ceramicists in Whitefish, et cetera, and he tells me the size of it, et cetera. So you see this here. As soon as I saw the image, I had seen it before, and it's Paradise. It's Adam and Eve, and it's I've seen it, and I'll tell you where I've seen it because and see on the bottom, it has the whitefish Montana. It's been hand thrown. You see these marks. So this is this was pottery, you know, that was hand thrown. And when I see this color and I see that green mat, I automatically think like 1930s. I think uh, definitely Ohio, like, like your um, uh, McCoy, Roseville, like that at Weller. I just think of that. And I saw it and it says whitefish. But again, the way that's inscribed on the base, that literally could have been souvenir. That could have been. So I'm like, I've seen this before. So I went, you know, I need to see if this is a Stein or something that I've, oh, I've seen. And I, I said, paradise Stein. And I was like, I know I've seen this before throwing the word beer because that kind of helps. I was like paradise beer Stein. And I'm like, I am. I no, I'm like Adam and Eve. Uh, aha. See the design. It's right here. It's the same design. And then I, it got me to thinking now in this day and age, it was very common for molds to be made and copies. They would actually make copies for, you know, some of these steins and some of these designs have been around for, you know, 100, 150 years. I believe what this is now, and again, the Whitefish Montana area does have a lot of pottery and does have a lot of, um, matter of fact, one of their biggest uh, potters just shut down. But they had a lot of things, just like, just like the area did. I believe that this is a prototype that was thrown and made to make steins, you know, for gift shops. This is what they were for. But again, it's definitely that 1930s, at the latest 1950, from the crazing and the green matte color. Let's call it 1930s. I believe it's a prototype that was probably a one-off mold. And because again, it was hand thrown, you know, from those three marks on the bottom, you know, it was hand thrown. And I believe it's probably a prototype that they didn't make too many of. And it's definitely made to be a Stein because you can even see the collar here. There would have been a pewter top or a top made for it just like these. Okay. And you can see from the casting not being as detailed that it was a mold. Okay. That it was molded. So it's Adam and Eve. It's the Stein. Here it is. It's not as designed. It's a prototype. Now value, 
Chuck will figure that out. Chuck, Chuck bought it at auction. So fair market value wise, he probably knows. And I'm real curious. I know Chuck's still doing a lot of research on it. So I want you to see that's the kind of thing I get all day from people where they're, you know, sending me these, these really cool mysteries like that. I love this kind of stuff. If you can't tell, I hope this is remotely interesting for you people. Um, again, I do want to go back and show you guys one more time my, uh, my mystery piece of the episode, because I really, I really uh, would love to get your help on this. If anybody uh, has a clue what they think it is, um, where are we at? Oh, I already got rid of it. Okay. Anyway, send me your mysteries to Josh at joshlevinespeaks.com. Um, Please tell me, rate the in your comments below, rate the show as an idea. I know this is a beta. I'm learning the software. I apologize. I know you. a lot of you have watched my other videos. You know I usually have time to edit and do some work to these things. But I really want to bring this up to you live every week because I get um, 20, 30 items a day from people. And I usually can just text them right back and tell them what it is. Uh, but this is... There are pieces out there that um, really make my day, and uh, this is the one that's got me going crazy right now. I have one for you for the next four weeks that are just as crazy as this. So if you like this, please share share my channel and share my show and tell people about it because that's how you can help me out. You can subscribe to my channel. You can uh, check out my blog posts um, and if you share anything you can and send me your mysteries again, send them to Josh at Josh speaks.com. I hope I don't regret putting that out there. Uh, cause I'm only one man. I got no crew, but I'm happy to do it for you. I didn't know that was going to rhyme. And again, I'm totally uh, unscripted here without a plan. I just wanted to show you some stuff. I'll get better at sharing my screen. And again, if you believe this has magic powers like I do, it's going to make this show successful. So again, this is What Is This with Josh Levine from Josh Levine Speaks. Thanks for sticking with me. It looks like we had a, a couple hundred people in here today. That's awesome. That's terrifying too. So thank you guys all so much. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week, Thursday, same time, same bat channel.